um, welcome. Thanks for spending the time um, to talk to us about um, the situation at Hutnall Town at the moment. Um, we've got in front of us your proposal for um, the, the members of Hutnall Town to accept with a view to you and your team coming on board, um, A, to bankroll the club and B, to take over the running of it, hopefully to make it um, commercially viable, which at the minute Hutnall Town's probably not commercially viable. It's not a sentence that we'd, we'd associate with the club, is it? No, very much not. Um, Tell me a little bit about this proposal. We've got in there, the term number one, it says, an injection of 2,000 per week will be available to Hucknall Town to provide adequate cash flow to, de uh, to cover all financial liabilities and ensure the smooth running of the club. First of all, clarify for me the smooth running of the club. Well, as you know, there are a lot of debts at the moment. And uh, my team and I have sat down and worked out that with the takings from the bar and the £2,000 that we will inject initially, yeah. um, that would be sufficient to, en to encourage the debtors that we've got yeah. to be paid off in the, in the time that we've got to do it. Okay, so um, £2,000 a week, what, what are the running costs of Hutnall Town at the moment as you see them? Obviously there's a playing budget, um, and I'm not asking you for specific figures, I'm not interested in, in kind of the, the noughts on, on it. What I'm interested in is where, where does the money kind of go to run Hutnall football, 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 Town Football Club? That's the big question. Okay. That's why we're at the stage we're at. Uh, we came into the club, um, we never wanted full control. Okay. From day one, all I've ever asked for is that if I'm putting my personal money in, sure. which that today stands at 20,000 already, okay. then I wanted to know where the money was being spent. Was it being spent wisely? Was the cash flow arranged as such so that we were using the best of our resources that was available? And I have requested copies of the financial accounts on, a numer on numerous occasions and never been given one. As a consequence of that, I called or asked for a meeting with the trustees of the club um, three or four weeks ago now, before I went on holiday, uh, with a view to looking at to see if we could remove an obstacle that was stopping the club going forward to where we want to be. As you know, we clearly stated that we would be transparent when we took over the club, or tried to take over the club, um, to which we have been so far. Sure. Uh, unfortunately, we've not been allowed access to either the fans forum or the official website. Uh, so our point has had to go out through Twitter, Facebook, etc. Um, so that the fans are aware of what's going off at the club. Now, this proposal is available on the website, um, click on ng15.com um, and check it out if you've not already seen a copy of it. Um, there's some great stuff in here talking about um, putting a, in place a youth system which will hopefully become a feeder system for the first team, which is of course, I suppose, the dream for any football club that you can um, produce your own in-house talent. Um, there's a lot of things on there. Commitment for full-time management support and guidance will be available to the club at all times for all departments. You've got a great team. I've met some of them, Jamie, Matt and Ian. Um, what do you see, as, if this proposal gets passed, what do you see their role being within the club? Well, their role within the club will be exactly like our group of companies that we, um, that, that we run. They will be, uh, if you like, the backbone of the club sure. to take the club forward. Um, when I initially came, uh, I have said about my vision, I still believe that the vision can be um, maintained sure. or attained, um, but it will only be done if our team is put into place. Sure. At the moment, we're taking a step forward, three back. Okay. We can't do that because of the time limit we've got to do it. Uh, the, the main important thing is, is that Hucknall Town stays as Hucknall Town. And if it's run on the current thing, unless you've got a guy uh, that's like myself and he's going to come in and pump money in, and not ask questions as to where it's going, sure. then you'll be fine. But every businessman that comes into his football club will ask the questions that sure. I've asked. Why do you think it is you've not got the answer to those questions? I honestly don't know, and this is why I asked for the meeting. I, I just believe that um, people sit down and realise that their job may be at risk. However, if you look at my proposals, sure. I've said that all staff that's employed by Upnall Town will remain in post. Okay. And furthermore, we will offer them free training and guidance in their specific roles. Because we need to enhance that. I accept that people sometimes go into posts 
appointed in it, but are not really trained for that. They go with the best of intentions, but right. maybe not the ability to do the job to its greatest potential. That's right. Sure. So as, if you like, the head shed, as I would in any of my businesses, I sit there and look at that person and say, have they got the qualities right to be doing the job? If the qualities are there, yes, perhaps we have to educate them. And that's what I mean by that. Okay. Um, you're no stranger to Town. You've been involved in the club... Um, <clears throat> Probably a couple of years ago, two or three years ago, am I right in saying that? Yeah, I was the vice chairman two, two, two years ago under David Gamble. Okay, um, and you kind of you pulled away from the club for, for a little while, why was that? Because at the time, obviously I could see the way the club was going. Sure. And I was putting money in then. Okay. And I made some suggestions to the committee as it was then, and nothing was done, and I could see that we were going to go down the line we're going. Sure. So I thought, well, do I, don't I? I really don't want to be involved with something whereas we're not fighting the fight the proper way. Now, it seems kind of gleaning bits off Twitter, off the Hutton Town Forum, um, and just kind of general word within the town, it does seem um, that the kind of fan support tends to be behind you guys. Um, but there is a feeling perhaps within the boardroom um, that there are concerns about the way you want to do things, um, some of the things that have gone on so far. What If this kind of doesn't get passed and your kind of proposal isn't accepted on Sunday, what do you see the future of the club being? Well, I don't want to sound hidebound or anything, but I think a lot of people are, are non-football. Sure. And it is used as, and they are the social club members, which is, which is quite right. Yeah. It is a social club, sure. it's a members club. Uh, but I think that a lot of tho those will probably be thinking parochial. And as a result of that, I actually fear for up North Town Football Club. For example, there are, it's muted. Um, I think I read it on the website while I was away because I have to say that the club has made no official correspondence with me whatsoever okay. until I asked for the initial meeting to be adjourned so that we could put our case forward. Um, I believe that Hook Nook Town will, will be in dire straits because we have uh, quite a considerable amount of money going out each week on contract players, sure. which are our best players. Of course. And we need to keep those people at the club yeah. to take us forward. Of course. Now if the club, if, we're, if, if we are not successful on Sunday, then you have to find that considerable money every week sure. until the end of the season. You can't just cancel a contract. Yeah. What you can do is three things. You can go into a negotiation with them to take like a payoff, yeah. um, or you've got to pay them still, even if they're released by the club, the amount that's on the contract. And at the moment, that is sitting at around about ten thousand pound till the end of the season. Sure. Now I've said that I will pay their wages until this is all sorted out, and I've been really, really. Um, proper and honest and I have sent a cheque every week up to that club and it's covering more than the playing budget the prefer yeah the contract players budget sure you know I want to be fair I want to be above board now if you've got a if you've got a, a social club then the social club should be making money to try and cover the rest of the debts with the gate money yeah now that clearly isn't happening sure so one of the proposals that we put forward was that we would try and <coughs> utilise that club more, i.e. bingo in the afternoon, sure. a bit more. When nights are quiet, um, we wanted to bring other things on board to try and make full use of yeah. the facilities available. Um, we got rid of the catering wagon because we were getting £15 a week a game off him. Yeah. Our last home game was £350. Sure. So it's, about, it's about making that place commercially as viable and as, as successful as it can possibly be. Absolutely. And at the minute you feel it's not reaching... Well, it's not. It's not reaching its full potential. It's definitely not. I mean, there's some suggestions. People are saying that we're not putting between two and three grand a week in. Yeah. Well, we were. Sure. Until I put a stop on it, until I'd seen the book. Sure. 
I mean, one one of the concerns, and this is this comes from um, from a direct conversation I had with somebody who who has concerns about your regime, for want of a better word, coming in, is that when you kind of arrived on the scene, you were confident that you were going to be able to do that. You're going to pay certain bills, and there's certain bills that haven't been, which you you will acknowledge have not been paid. Why is that? Well, obviously, we got to the stage where again it goes back to financial information. Sure. We were not being given the financial information. I was being asked if I could see the financial information. I never got a look at anything. Right. Um, so you don't put money into something that you don't know where it's going, sure. if it's your own money. Uh, that's why we brought Matthew Till on board. He's as a financial man because he operates the finances for my company, which is a multi-million pound company. Um, so he knows what he's doing. Sure. He knows how to cash flow. He knows who needs paying where and when. He's a very, very competent individual. Fantastic. Steve, whatever the outcome of Sunday, wish you all the best um, and hopefully we'll see you again soon. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you.